From PR News in Washington, I'm distributed through the Internet and viewed by thousands of Russian police. And now PR's founder has fled the country. He was fired for refusing. He said he refused to do PR News. And now the number of Americans falling sharply in March. Dow is 3, 16, 5, 5, 10, 22, 22, 14 and a half, 41, 7, 84, 39. The Supreme Court says this is PR News. And now PRs and reports reports and dust huffens the lungs and closes lung holes. Those lung holes are now closed. The new lung was slashed in half. The old lung did respond to fraudulent criticism of PR news. They say federal law limits how much money can be recovered by victims of PR news. I feel like I'm watching Mondo Connie. Hey, look, lemur scat. We must be getting close. Looks like Bob's. Listen to this music. <laughs> Bob, isn't it true that unless you have found your field in life, the thing that you want to do, isn't it true that you frequently think of what you are best suited for? And if you could only find out what he's best suited for, he would work 18 hours a day, I assure you. He would study, he would self discipline himself, he'd stop fooling around. I'm not saying that you are, I'm just using that as an example. I'll tell you what you're best fitted for. How do you like that? Now, Bob, if you could ever believe this, you'd just jump out of your skin. I guess you're jumping now, aren't you? Bob, you are best fitted for anything you want to do. Anything. I don't care about your past education. I don't care a thing of your past. You're best fitted for anything. You know this theory that's been known since the beginning of time. That we are what we think. I'm Bob, and this here is my place. Excellent. Right. You know who that is? That's right. It's your pal, Bobo the Clown. Yay! Hey, Bobo, want to play a game? Okay, look up. Look down. Now look at Mr. Frying Pan. Uh-oh, Bobo, fall down, go boom. Get a trace on that signal. Now. Let's roll. The other officers quickly take up the slack. <laughs> How big it was. It could be seen for miles and miles around. Oh. Here's the king's command. I'm going to command all these musicians to start playing their musical instruments. And as soon as they start playing the music, you are to fall down and bow down in front of that great image, 90 feet high, and pray to it. A bad joke. I'm not giving in to a smile or a grin on a face huh, I might never see again I'm not gonna fly in some big phony sky on a life that I know just can't win yes 
Bob. You rang? Am I a lousy picker? Oh, uh, whatever. I, I analyze it and assess it thoroughly, and then I make my prediction on the air, and I pick the opposite. Now there's a guy who knows how to get his point across. I stand on my record. <laughs> about how I do anything. One thing I shared with you this afternoon is that Bobby didn't listen to me, and I'm thankful now that he didn't, and hopefully if you've got a negative spouse, you're not listening to them either, because he didn't listen to me, and he went about and, and built the business because he saw something in it. Um, a friend of his, or an acquaintance of his, him, his had shown him the plan, and um, I won't bust his bubble. That's his part of the story. But let us look to the next paragraph of prophecy, which says... Dateline for dominance, 1991, first paragraph, and I quote, World War III, Church of the Subgenius shifts into operation removal, end quote. Uh, now, admittedly, dear friends, that leaves open some room for interpretation. And just what is operation removal designated to remove? And knowing Bob, he'd want to remove the very concept of removal. And Ivan was seen leaving shortly thereafter with this gentleman. We observe Ivan and this gentleman again travel to a country western bar. Bob's country bunker? He said he was going out too stuff with Lisa. Unless his name's Lisa. <laughs> Doesn't look like at least I know. We observe Ivan and this gentleman as they're walking, basically fondling one another on the street. Oh, my God. Here we are. Bob's country bunker. We see him. All right, let's go. Well, Mr. Stang? No, we'll do. Uh, you been doing drugs again, Ivan? Do you know what Jenkins is? Now, there's our foolproof plan. Hey, if you only have one left... Is it still your left nut? We shouldn't go there. No. I suppose Bob told you that his plan has been approved. Hi. I'm Bob. Hi. Are you famous? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I saw this program that I'm talking about tonight some seven years ago. Seven years ago when I saw this program, I folded my arms across my chest. I crossed my legs. And then I looked at that guy that was talking about this program, and I said, no way. Whoever this joker is, whoever's up there, he's always grinning. I thought, why was he always grinning? It never dawned on me because he is so doggone rich. Being broke's not a good deal, but he looked at me and he says, Al, whatever you do, you're going to like Area 3. He says, as a matter of fact, judging from the first two areas, you'll probably want to be involved in Area 3. And I was committed and convinced that Area 3 looked good. And then he spelled it out to me. D E A D dead. Fantastic. I'll talk like this. Bob's your uncle, mate. That really doesn't help, Bob. You get the slacking off, you get the back <laughs> Well, the, that would have to have been last Fourth of July. It was very hot out. Oh, so hot. It was just blazing. And I was at the youth group picnic. Minister Bob was there in his Bermuda pants. <laughs> they cover more legs than his Bermuda shorts, you see. And they're just a little bit tighter in the back. They just hug his buns in the cutest way. But anyway, <laughs> I was slicing some Rice Krispie squares I had made, and Minister Bob was filling cups of the punch bowl with his ladle. It was the biggest ladle I'd ever seen. I wanted to touch it, but I was afraid to because it was so abnormally large. And as I watched him with that ladle, he kept dipping it into the bowl and pouring punch and dipping and pouring and dipping and pouring and dipping until all the cups were filled. And it didn't take long because that was some big ladle. And then suddenly, violently, there was a shudder. My buttocks were tingling. I was alone, lost in space. I saw him toss that ladle aside, his arm exhausted. I must have passed out because that's all I remember. So you won't talk to me, huh? Where'd you get the diamond bracelet, Miss Porter? You may call me Connie. You did what during the storm, remember? You said, all right, Connie, we might as well go down together. I liked the way you said Connie. It was like a punch in the jaw. Tell me about the bracelet. That's a dead giveaway. You're wanting us to die together like that. 
together, even more personal, living together. What'd you pay for the bracelet? Nothing. Barton? You're a low person, darling. Obviously out of the gutter. Maybe that's why I'm attracted to you. And maybe that's why you're attracted to me. Now, what's going to happen? Do you know that's breaking the second commandment? Because Babylon was the head of witchcraft, sorcery, fortune teller. Notice that. When the music starts playing, you're to bow down and worship Babylon. Like the beat, 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 beat of the tum-tum. When the jungle shadow falls. Like the tick, tick, tack of my old grandfather's clock. As it stands up straight against the wall. Like the drip, drip, drop, drip, drop of the rain. tell you, I jumped in with both feet and started listening to tapes and reading books because I didn't. I had to read lots of books, lots and lots of books. And sometimes you're going to pick up a book in the beginning and you're going to read it and you're going to think, I can't finish this. This book is too heavy. And you're going to put it down and a couple of years later, a couple of months later, you're going to pick up that book and all of a sudden it's going to slap you in the face. Ow! Hello, Connie. Bob, I'm so glad. You're glad. How do you think I feel? And you're just as good as new again. Oh, ho! In high society, I just ain't the type. Folks all look so surprised when I light my pipe. Yes! Oh, yeah. You, uh, smoke a pipe, too? Oh, don't be coy. I like it, too. <coughs> What's it gonna get you, Connie? All this business of filling my pipe, pouring my drinks, corned beef and cabbage? I suppose I should pretend that I don't know what you mean by that. But I won't. Connie, look, for the past three days, all you've done is... All I've done is what? Put down that pipe and get my pipe up. Oh, 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 oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A partner in sin. Sometimes there is a mood that just... We don't know why. You wouldn't kid a pal, would you, Connie? Well, I'm not kidding. Or yourself, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know yet, Bob. It's great. Just great. Oh. <laughs> Children, well, here we are, Doc. The two lovebirds, all ready for the wedding. Sit down. Are we healthy enough to get married? Yeah, both as solid as a new dollar. That first baby didn't hurt you a bit. You can have a dozen more if you want to. And Bob, you'll be pleased to know that there's no trace of your old VD. 100% pure. What did you say about a first baby? You've been married before? Doctor, what did you call it? VD? You mean to say that Bob has actually had one of those horrible diseases? That isn't true, Doctor. Is that true, Bob? All right, if you must know, I did have it. But it's no worse than having an illegitimate child. I think it is. Why, I, I'd sooner marry a leper. Thank you for letting me know about this in time, Dr. West. And now I'm going out into the clean, fresh air. Well, there went my happy wedding right out the door. I'm terribly sorry, Bob. Ah, Miss Doggle, Miss Bad by the scalp, shake her up and down a bit and chop off the slack. Come on. Down this streaking outfit, uh, we'll finally blame it on God. Uh, and there'll be some kind of church started uh, called the Streaker Church. Uh, and boy, they'll just, they'll, they'll follow and try to make it religious. Uh, but I want to tell you it's abominable uh, and it's filthy and it's rotten. Uh, and men ought to stand up against it. Say amen, you know so. Uh, the pipes, we need a jolly light, jolly light. We're free from every care and strife. Every time we drink the best of the best of wine, which wine I'm glad that this gay life is mine. Fear the name of fingers, waters, dirty birdie Holland, no sterling beef or chemistry. Eep, eep. Fear the name of mist. mystic Myron, Tucker, Toll, and Battis, so ring in, no oh, Georgie free. Oh, smiling, no neck bob. <laughs> if you understand that we have all had a partner in sin. You really didn't do it by yourself. There was an influence there. Now we shop at Neiman Market instead of Kmart and Sears. 
We go on Neiman Marcus, and as soon as they spotted us, they said, hi, Bob and Bonnie. Connie. They remembered us. And so in the back, they take you in the back, and they have drinks for you, whatever it is, scotch, whiskey, whatever you want. And I ask for the usual. No, sir. No, sir. If you drink five gallons of Gatorade, you're going to spend five gallons of Gatorade somewhere in one of these restaurants. You can buy that, right? Frankly, either way, if you're something. Look Hey! Turns out, Connie had a secret of her own. We went and did some crazy things, and I can remember standing up on stage and putting the microphone up in my mouth, and nothing came out. <laughs> and I went, oh my god. No, Connie, no! <laughs> oh! Blew a five foot flame out of my butt. It really isn't all that bad. Hope you understand that I there's don't... nothing more liberating than being able to pee and poop your own diaper. <laughs> Don't ever ask me to do that again. You just have to be careful. I mean, you always think about, you know, getting poop on the finger, you know. And I remember the first time it happened, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I mean, it's like, oh my God. I've got poop on my finger. And then I started thinking to myself, it could be worse. I could have a job. I can't, I just can't do it. And I said, Bobby, please don't ever make me do that again. Don't call me Bobby. From PR News in Washington, I'm unexpected. In the coming hour, President Obama will end the U.S. and effectively end more than a decade of PR's reports by the end of this year. But less than 48 hours after making an unannounced president, the Obama argue that Obama should be shielded from liability. According to a senior administration official, the official says the U.S. will continue a military terrorism operation, much like PR News. Technocrat politicians posed Modi's. Modi said violence and terrorism must be brought to appear news. <laughs> Dow is 6266667. Godzilla drops to second place ahead of the amazing PR news. Secret protesters say the Ford. Secret police say this is an estimated $111 million in domestic PR news in Washington. Oh, yes, dear friends. Uh, that uh, PR news, of course, comes from Limur. Fernanda Nandi, Limur. And uh, everything else we heard just about was from Reverend Susie the Floozy's show from WREK Atlanta, the show called Bob's Slack Time Funhouse. And uh, I think that's a, a, an oldie collage of hers. Really intense. Um, nobody else does what Susie does. That's ever. for sure. They never did before, and they never will again. And if they do, they will probably be arrested. Yeah, 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 yeah. And friends, we have a new microphone in the station it's tonight. It's so exciting. We, we should think, try to think of a name for it. It's really sleek and shiny and futuristic. It's silvery and uh, reflective and 
doesn't have the big black foam wind uh, screen on it. It has no. a, a little modern day flat disc of a windscreen to make the pops, pop, 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 those pops not sound so bad. And it has an exquisite geometric sort of artistic balance thing that holds it just so. Speaking of artistic bounce, <clears throat> the Lonesome Cowboy Dave should be calling in any minute. You know, I shouldn't say that because that would cause some smart aleck to beat him and call in instead. And you know how they are. You yes, know how, you know I how know the how listeners they are. are. Yes. Now, see, so this is probably not Dave. This is probably some listener. Our listeners. Do you are think wonderful. that's one of the listeners? Do I think what? No, I didn't think you no. no, it is Dave. Okay, it's good. It's our Dave. It's our Dave. Yeah, we were we had just uh, mistakenly set up someone besides you to call line one, but now that can't happen. But that crapped out? No. I it's such oh. It's okay. Everything's fine. Sure it is. Sure it is. Thankfully, it's you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave. I, did, I didn't mean you personally. Actually, when, when we came in, our uh, previous DJ, Charleston, said, everything's good. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, yes, it's, it's all, all good. good. And well, I know I what that. he means. I know what he means, but I still kind of, as sweet a guy as he is, I still wanted to punch him, too. <laughs> I, wanna, I always want to punch everybody who says it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. I'm the proof that they're that it's not all good. You well, yeah, I'm not all good. I'm kind of good bad. Yeah. I, what I usually feel at first when I'm confronted with that is like, yeah, maybe you're right. And then I feel real guilty because why would I feel like n nothing's good? <laughs> and then then I want to strangle. But I don't want to punch anybody because my hands are too artistic. I, at least <laughs> right. the, the flat handler parts of them. The old ones with the tattoos, those are the, oh man, long story short, it just, it's not worth doing. So kids, don't tattoo weird buttock designs on your hands, especially the part of your palms of your hands, especially since they tell you to never have a tattoo on the palm of your hand because it's not only ridiculously painful, it can be dangerous. Just don't. Is that true? I've come to think of it, I can't remember seeing any palm tattoos. No, you wouldn't want you wouldn't want to have those little needles going in there. But I've it's seen. But but think of all the other places that people get tattooed. You know, well, yeah. that would kind of hurt. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> that are even more sensitive, especially because that's what they're made for. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Then I don't know why the abjuration would be so strong to avoid the palms of your hands. Then perhaps it's. Something religious, you know, for all I could tell. Oh, Dave, you're so old that you don't even have any tattoos, right? Only the oh, very, no. very old and the very, very young are tattooless now. Well, the yes. very, very old, um, some of them have gone through various tattoo phases. This will, this will probably be my third tattoo phase. Because, you know, in the days of punk rock, a lot of people used to wear tattoos and stuff. And... Then there was the second wave of tattoos, and now there's the. Com it's very common. In fact, it's so common, it's like. Remember the illustrated man? <laughs> oh, Dr. Legume? Yeah, I know him personally. <laughs> he, you know, he's not really illustrated from the waist down, I don't think. No, he just draws on himself with a big old ink crayon. Oh boy, is he fully illustrated from the waist up. Woo! Hey. But see, um. I think if I if I had a I don't know I just don't know I don't know because I'm old I, 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 I you know I'll never wear my and here's another thing I try not to be cool right I mean my hair is real real long that's the least cool thing you can do with your hair if you're a man or a woman these days uh, yeah I mean I try not to be cool but uh you know, I don't have any tattoos, and but 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 every now and then I accidentally do something that makes it seem like either I'm cool or I'm trying to be cool or something. <laughs> Just the fact that I even brought this up is probably a good example. I, I'm ashamed of myself now. I'm going to shut my mouth for two seconds. 
Time's up. Okay, I can talk again now. (laughs) What a bizarre sidebar. Reminds me of like, hey, did you ever see those ramen style pool noodles? They're using to strangle the little orphans and so forth. Ramen Uh, style pool noodles? That's a that's a joke. Oh. um, I feel as if 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 there was an ark filled with every type of human two by two, just like on the uh, Noah's Ark back so many thousands of years ago, that I would not let you come on my ship unless you do the five following things. Make me plenty of good food. <clears throat> read this rest of this for me. I no, can't I read the rest of it for you because I don't have it in front of me. Uh, you can read it beha- behind you if you uh, change the dialectical approach. Okay. Are, are you're talking about the arc, uh, uh, Div- your Dave's arc, as opposed We're to talk- Noah's arc? Yes, Dave's Ark would be very uh, profuse with wildebeest and, and uh, all the hairy children of the jungle would be there arguing their uh, Catholic songs together, you know, and it would be, it'd be like yo-ho-ho. Ho, oh, like a like WCSB stuff. station meeting. Oh, no, more like a w, WC Fields uh, irrationality complex. WC Fields and WCSB, <laughs> what is the connection? Yeah. It's halfway there. We almost know. W.C. Fields B. Radio. The tension lies somewhere in the middle. Yeah. See how many dynamic subterfuges can you find from that on a, on a pre-cellular level? You just go down each level and there's like W.C. Fields and it's like an anagram for C.W. Sled Park and, or something like that. And then you know that's the same part where, the, you know, that bar they destroyed down the flats because the insane people were... Did you hear about that? A, a bar no. down in the flats destroyed a by bar? insane people? A, a bar? That was not the last, the last subgenius revival. That's why we don't do those anymore. I think that's where it was it's held, and it has kind of a reputation for allowing insane people to express themselves freely. And there was some show, and... Uh, Somebody uh, lit a stink bomb or something in the place and uh, started sh- shouting fire in the crowded auditorium. <gasps> the police had to come because people were divided into two camps. There were the elderberries and then there were the uh, Stoneheads. And they. <clears throat> I, 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 I would join the Stoneheads. Well, no, they're not like stoners or heads or anything like oh, that. I know, they're I very... know. They would be hard, more hard headed. Well, You'd yeah, be able to use them as battering qualified. rams to escape from the non-existent fire in the club. So this well, was local. Are, was this local news that you're referring to? Yeah, so, they, I guess some of them are neoliberals or whatever they call it nowadays and stuff. When they, uh, you know, if you don't wear the right uniform, I guess you're you're out. Neocoms, <laughs> neocoms. That means neocommies. Well, I heard disguised that, as is... Republicans, disguised as Christians, disguised as humans. I want to hear an interesting, funny little anecdote about what you just said, which is actually true. Sure. And I heard it on a, on a genuine news source, not the lie I just made up there. Yeah, man, get onto my cloud. One of the Koch brothers went to Russia under Stalin there and made millions and millions of dollars rebuilding the Soviet economy. Then he comes back and starts all these anti-communist organizations like everybody in the world who is a communist or some, or is a Stalinist or something. Now, wait a minute. And How could was, the Koch brothers be working for Stalin? That was Stalin died a long time ago, probably before those guys were born. No, Pappy. It's like, you know, Pappy Bush. Oh, Pappy uh, Koch. Pappy, 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 Pappy Koch. Pappy yeah. Koch. Yes. Koch. Right. <laughs> so we're <laughs> we're, we're talking about those brothers. Western. That's how you pronounce their name. Right? The past, it's not Pappy Cock and Pappy so. Bush. So I don't know. <laughs> you got a point there. Those two go together, don't they? Oh well. The Pappy Pappy yeah. Cock and we don't, Pappy Bush. Yeah, we don't need to dwell on that. Uh, I don't. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't know if I got it yet. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> uh, now back to but w- anyways, 
Back to WC. WC is also known as a water closet in England, which is a bathroom. Yep. That is also a very important part of the clue. Yes, right the there. WC clue. Water closet like SB in Cleveland. <laughs> now, who, now we just work. have to figure out what SB stands for. <laughs> Some bitch. That's a, you can say there, that, okay, right? Because S U M B I T C H, that's not a word. So you can say it. Is, if it's yep. not a word, you can say it on the radio, right? Oh. Galacundale. 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 <laughs> so, uh, back to the subject of Africanized killer deer. Have you had any trouble with those in uh, Ash Tabula? No, just as out in the lovely metro parks of Cleveland, out here in the sticks, yes, they're... Uh, they had a deer kill, I think it was last Sunday. Not maybe it wasn't a couple weeks ago. Is that what they call a well, public hunt? Can't a public say hunt. that. Yeah, don't say that fast. A no, they're not having hunt. they're not having a deer problem of any kind because the winter <laughs> apparently killed a whole lot of everything. Yeah. And there's yeah. articles about the many things that was killed and various new Oh, they find deer. old hobo skeletons wrapped up around deer skeletons all mummified and trying to get warm. What twigs. a way to go. Yeah. Hug, yeah. Having to hug a deer to get a little a dead little, deer. A deer that starved yeah. to death. Well, wait a minute. Why didn't you just eat? See, the you deer? made me think of that now, and that is a, not a very pretty picture to paint. <laughs> I, know, I, know. I have a talent for that, not. don't I? I visualize <laughs> things and then I share them with with people, and then they now feel I, sicky, sicky. And then all the listeners tum-tum. need buckets. Yes. Yes, I, I can see this humor now. If you were to literally take the dead deer and you know put it up on your body kind of so like the the horns and the head were up above your head maybe perhaps like a uh, mentally ill a native of some tribe that we've never heard of before right that's that was standard procedure dance around with a deer skull or a bear skull on your head and represent the the uh, spirit of the deer or the bear or the kangaroo or the right, wombat right. or whatever yeah See, yeah, yeah. The spirit guide, and see, I always mistook that for like the Pantalones and these other tribes and stuff like that who were like cargo cults and used to wear like the underwear of Westerners on their head, like boxer shorts well, sub, and briefs. The subgenius tribes would uh, wear the skull of a golfer. The shamans, you know, would wear a, 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 a witch doctor outfit that had the skull of a World Cup golfer over their skull. Which wasn't hard to do because subgeniuses often have tiny little heads. Present company <laughs> excluded, uh, unfortunately. Yes, unfortunately, some are microcephalic and others are just macrocephalic. And we're in the macro realm. Our heads are too big for our feet. That's right. It's like an old blues song. Top heavy. Lord, my head's too big for my feet. Lord, Lord, Lord. That's the part I always just like when it little turnarounds and stuff like that. You know, the guy would take his encrusted uh, claw like hand and jam it into the interior parts of the round hole guitar. Sometimes if there was an fall, it had to be like kind of a uh, kung fu or some sort of martial arts move. Usually brought the house down. Of course, there was construction going on next door and explosives in the basement. Who, 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 know, who, who knows how far it really went? <laughs> I feel so sorry for the listeners. The half of them are trying to listen to what you're trying to translate, Dave, and the other half are listening to the elevator music Rolling Stones in the background. The well, Roqueville Orchestra performs the hits of the Rolling Stones is what's in the background. It's something, it was a CD that little Pope S. Pantiera didn't want anymore and donated to the church, and here it is. But I can't even hear what, what song was playing. Angie. 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 Yes, there's a big Angie. 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 Angie.
angel. I need to give you a bath. <laughs> My angel. You scratch it. You should be a champion. It's like when he goes on the next tour, he's going to be Angina. <laughs> <laughs> We started the show with the, the Muzak version of Sympathy for the Devil in the background, and that caused me to remember when Einstein's Secret Orchestra used to play Sympathy with the Devil, mm -hmm. only yep. Dave would invent completely <laughs> new <laughs> lyrics. <laughs> oh, please, you know, like a chorus. Everybody else would be going, woo, 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 and Dave would be coming up with all new things you didn't know about the devil. Uh, if only we could have understood things. Yes. Yeah, and if I could have, too. I mean, think I, I could have capitalized it and been on Fox News or something like that and had a, a, got a, a couple of availabilities every month and stuff like that and moved into the socket. <laughs> and then got my check every once in a while from Root Baby. That's what we call them here at Fox Central. We call them Root Baby. You know, Dave, if you changed your shtick, you could probably be on Fox News and or, and other Foxy shows, I, I guess. You kind of neocon it a little bit. Well, maybe, or, you or just, I don't know, you could be, they British would acted. have, they'd have like a conservative and a liberal, and then they'd have you. Well, a America is a really great and wonderful place, and America should really remain true to its uh, ideals of greed and envy, and especially of malicious warfare. And uh, that's the main thing about America, and I like to wave the flag daily. Of course, I'm not a citizen, but my voice makes you believe me. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, only you, that wasn't a very American-sounding accent, man. No, man, I you're was trying sound, to... You're supposed to sound more like an American. You know, say, okay. say, and you have to learn to pronounce the word narcissistic like this, narcissistic. <laughs> <laughs> you got to say it like that real fast, me, because you know who's. <laughs> yeah, there you go, like that. Wow. Wow. How would they know that, though? How would they know if Obama... Is narcissistic or not, unless they were hiding under his bed sometimes to see if he was looking at himself in the mirror. I mean, you know. Oh, he just he just looks that way. My dad, yeah. I, I was telling Pappy, going, Pappy, I don't know if I want to move back to Texas. More than 50% of people there think Obama's a Muslim from Kenya. And he said, well, I think he is Muslim. I said, why? <laughs> he says, it just seems like one. On the other <laughs> hand, I saw a comment yesterday, you know, that uh, 